This is the Play No Games podcast. We the hardest working podcast in Portland, Oregon, man. Play no games. Play no games podcast slash show. Uh, welcome to the Play No Games. I carried away a little bit. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I didn't know we were going that high. You know, I got to go <laughs> a couple of notches. But anywho, welcome to the Play No Games <laughs> podcast live show. I'm Rob. I'm Arthur. And we are back here again with another latest installment. Um, before we get going, once again, if you like what we're doing, um, actually, we haven't talked about this enough. Uh, we are literally like building a studio. Um, and missed, missed of building it right now, and that's why we are currently right here. And, um, you know, it's funny, I've always wanted to like build like a team and a group. You so you know, like the Supreme Dreamers, no, Mark Phillips, anime guy, bruh, I don't watch anime. Oh my gosh, you don't know the Supreme, like, he does all like the Jordan, like, after like the NBA finals, he goes like. LeBron, Kyrie, none of that. Anywho, no. Oh, oh my person. gosh, you make things unfun. Um, Absolutely, I don't. I just don't. I don't know. I just, long story short, they are currently houseless, and right now we are studioless. They're looking for like a new home to do their skits and all oh, their stuff. Okay. So, I was like, wait. What? Um, so anywho, if. We're trying to build a studio currently right now, so it'd be very helpful if you like what we're doing and we're adding a lot of new members to the team and things like that. Please donate to my cash app, Dollar Sign Hero. Rob, it'll be in the descriptions. Yeah, it'll be in the descriptions. Um, that donation. Yeah, we need that because you don't be paying us. That's true. I I am a slave owner, driver. Um, Wow. Nah, I love these guys. Give um, us, us, us free. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, if you can do that, definitely that would be helpful. And then, because um, we really want to show you, this studio is going to look nice when we get finished with it, the schematics and everything. But other than that, I also want to say, please follow us at lookhere.fri. That's Hi. where you can get some of the clips on Instagram. The look uh, here page is going to have some interesting things dropping on that. Uh, a lot more solo, singular content will be dropping. And then um, mm -hmm. please follow our YouTube page. Or, uh, that's Play No Games. That's where you should be subscribed. Hit that bell. And then last but not <laughs> least, not last but not least, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And, and wherever you listen to your podcast. Exactly. Please, please. And I have another announcement. But that is something we should do after our very first segment. So I'll pass that to you, my big homie. I thought we were doing our uh, new segment. That after we do the first Oh, yeah, first? that's what the, the announcement. Yeah. Oh, okay. My bad. I didn't mean to ruin the announcement. Um, You know, our very first segment of the, sh of the day is called Play No Games. This is how we do it. Um, You know, uh, it could be positive, negative, informative, perspective, good, bad, ugly. Whatever it is. What are we playing no games with, Robert? Ooh. Oh. Uh, oh, dang. I like it. This camera work out nice. I see you. I see you. Um, I actually don't want to play no games about... I. You know I'm horrible at uh, pronouncing and enunciating words, but uh, what's his name? Brent Fia, Fias? The basketball player? You, the singer. Oh, yeah. Can you say his name? I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I know you're talking about. I want to give him a shout out. His album, like, is hitting me like Tiller album. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm talking about he, Tiller and Pandemic. He is low key. It's crazy because someone had asked me if I heard his music. And I was like, I don't think so. And then I realized I had heard 25 of his songs and didn't realize it was him. And I was like, yeah. So. I have to agree to that. He's a, a great artist, great, great person you should listen to. Oh, yeah, Thousand and Ten Percent. Um, off his new album, Bad Luck and Jackie Brown are like my mm -hmm. and then I will also say Loose Change. Those are like that's, that's my Lucy's. 
Oh, you've heard? I've heard Loose Change. I haven't heard the other two yet. Oh, uh, Bad Luck is phenomenal. Okay. Oh, uh, Jackie Brown is so like, like, oh yeah. And then I also have to say, uh, Angel. I think that actually, um, also I want to play no games about. I'm a, yeah, actually I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty with you. As a dude, I don't hear a lot of dudes saying this. It's not that I'm planning my wedding day, but there's mm. certain things I want to do on my wedding day. Where I'm like, there's like certain things. Absolutely, that's real. There's certain things I want to do that I know me and all my friends are going to have fun doing. And like that Angel song almost overtook the J. Cole verse from um, Pretty Little Liars mm-hmm. that I'm going to walk down the aisle to. Because uh-uh. Angel, I was like, damn, that's kind of. Uh-uh. That model took that. So um, I just also want to just say, I think the reason why on uh, that Brent album just hits is it just gives me the vibes of like when we were in the pandemic and Taylor came out with a, I think it was anniversary or something like that, that whole yeah. album. And like, I put, and you may, you may get on me for this. I put the last Taylor and Brent in like, the goat category already. Wow. Like, wow. I like, all three of them are like young goats right now. I like, I like all three of them. Um, they have timeless status? music, bro. Goat status. Ooh, we blast. Maybe Tiller. Tiller. I feel like a lot more of his older stuff. <gasps> um, I, if you're going to say Tiller, you got to say Tori. I got something about him today. <laughs> <laughs> if you gotta, if you go say Taylor, you gotta say Taylor. Mean, he's in jail. I, mean, well, I wouldn't be surprised, but um, all three of them watched Tory Lanes. I don't know about that. Come on, bro. I don't know about that. After that shot, bro. He uh, no. He, he ain't, even he his album he dropped after that was it was a dope album. I have, I didn't listen to it. See, go listen to it. I don't even know the name of it though. Exactly. I don't know yeah, the name of a lot it. of albums. You must hate black women. I don't. Why I you like Tory Lanez? Women. He's a good singer. Okay. Just like I like Chris Brown. He's a good singer. You saying I hate women too? Like, I have, whoa, <laughs> whoa! It's a growing theme. You. Uh, I know a lot of women too. who love Chris Brown still. Man, we're not. You know what? We. I we blame just, Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just late. I'm just late. I'm just late. <laughs> wow. Um, anywho, I, I actually, I just want to say, I want to play on games about uh, the Brent Fayaz uh, album because it's really good. If you're RB, uh, Sad Boys Hour. Um, 24-7. Yeah, I love R&B. 24-7. Uh, everyone's like, Rob must be thinking about a girl. Um, no, I just really like R&B songs. That's me. That ex- exactly. That's me. You'll never know if I'm really talking about something or I'm just, I just, okay. man. But okay. would you play no games about? Bah. You know, I saying, you know, uh, back in our day, um, we used to run around outside and not get in trouble and maybe get in trouble and, but we always knew when we had to be home. Nowadays, kids be outside running around <laughs> and. Doing whatever the hell they want at any time of the day. So I'm playing no games with parenting. Man, get your kids. I continue to see kids getting on the bus 11, 12 o'clock at night on my way home or on my way somewhere else. Getting on it. Man, you get on the bus by yourself. Get your kids. Like, you know, like I understand it's summertime, but still, like, there's curfews for a reason, you mm. know, especially nowadays where a lot of kids are getting kidnapped and taken and all types of weird shit. But so my my biggest thing is just parenting, bro. Like, I think we I was watching a video today about a lady talking to a dude saying she has a 13 year old girl and she doesn't know what to do. And the dude was like, raise them to be self-confident and this and that. You won't have to worry about predators and other people and i and i and i hear that but you also have to be in their lives and i think a lot of times as i don't have any kids but from my perspective of having a lot of nieces and nephews um and working with kids for a long time when you're not in their lives 
they tend to go in a bad direction that you don't want them to. And so be in your kids' lives, love your kids, talk to your kids, be a parent. If you don't have kids, be a parent, please. That's what I'm playing no games with. I also want to, to, to also, like, keep that conversation going, keep the conversation going. Uh, man, um, some like, what, what generation are we? I don't know. Like X? Baby no. boomer? Baby boomers? No. We are Gen- not. Gen- baby Gen- boomers is like the 60s. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, damn, I'm dumb. Uh, generation X, right? Are I think we're there? Generation X. I don't think so. I think that's what's going on. No, millennials. Yeah, we're millennials. All right. These Gen Zers and Xers and all this other stuff. Y'all, was, <laughs> I, was, I saw a video, right? And actually, not more serious. Someone lost their life. They were like a 13 year old, a 12 year old, and like 11 year old, like a beat an old man with a traffic cone. And then he like bled out and died. What? Like, and that was like late at night. And when you said that, that kind of like made me remember and think about that. And then I think for me, like, I just have to say, we're just kind of like, the kids at this age are like built different, man. And, like, it's, like, weird where I'm kind of, like, those kids woke up, like, you know what, it'll be fun. Let's get a traffic cone and just, uh, uh, like, beat up, like, a an old person. Like, yeah, that, like, that's weird. Like, I understand, like, don't get this. Don't get me wrong. And I'm actually taking shots at young kids, even though their brains are not developed. I understand being a kid and doing dumb stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Doing dumb stuff. Yeah. I had a fan. I had two family members put like a small kid in a dryer. Like I understand, I get it. But like when you get like preteen, like come on, you gotta have some more context. Yeah, guys, and like, th- am I am I being too hard? Like that's some real dumb shit. Like I'm gonna attack an old man with the traffic cone. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand like that whole concept of it either. Like. Why are we allowing our kids just to to do, you know, like, like they're grown. But then it goes to another point where it's like a lot of our kids are raising kids. And I think that, that for me is, um, is a hard thing to kind of understand. Yeah. I'm I'm messing up with this camera. This this is terrible right now. I locked it. I don't know how I locked it. How'd you lock it? I don't know. But like, we have a lot of kids that are raising kids, and so they're 14 years old, taking care of their six-year-old, seven-year-old, and it becomes a lot, like, on this on the people. So I think a lot of those kids are like, well, shit, I'm, I'm grown, I'm raising kids. You know, that's just from my perspective. So, but, yeah, what's up? Let's move into our... How do you stuff. fucking lock the screen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's keep it like this. And the only thing you should do is just, just do that and just do that. Yep. All right. Oh, I'll have to word. I don't I have the wordsmith how you did that. All right. So, anywho. Um, so, AJ came up with a really good idea because um, I get a lot of messages in my DMs. I don't know about you, AJ. And when I mean a lot, I say like one to two when people are talking about um, the show. And uh, AJ thought it would be a pretty good idea for people to interact. Um, And I think before we do every show, so like Tuesday in our rotation, we're going to, if you have questions and we're going to give you an opportunity to answer it on our Instagram page at lookhere.fri and we'll answer them on the show. And it's going to be in our segment called Cheat Codes. Interesting. Why do you call it Cheat Codes? Because, you know, keeping up with the theme of the show, I've been thinking about it. And, you know, our viewers, they're really the Cheat Code because they're watching us. So mm, Interesting. Okay. So they're going to give us some... Um, some things that um, they're going to give us the direction and then we're going to give them the code of what they're trying to figure out. So we're going to decipher what they want to know. So we're going to be answering cheat codes on the show. Interesting. Or we can name it something else, but that's something I came up with a couple cheat nights ago. Codes. Okay. 
I mean, it could be something totally else because we're not calling the people the gamers. Like I've, I agreed. I've been floating it out for a while. People are like, eh. play no games. Our viewers would be gamers. We're not doing that. It's nah. okay. Okay, but how about this? <laughs> how about the segment that called the cheat codes? Does that pass? Uh, I'll have to think on that one. I okay, really, I really will. Maybe that's one of the questions that you ask or you answer for us in our comments is the name of the segment. Maybe. Ooh. And that could be the beginning of something bigger than this. Okay. I like that. We'll give them opportunity. And if you don't do it, then we're going to do it ourselves. Call it cheat codes. So I don't know if you want that. Ah, <laughs> we've been taking shots at my ideas. But, uh, I don't like, I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, speaking of, I think I want to kind of start things off with, uh, here we go with the non-internet man. Um, have you heard of Versus? Yeah. Did you hear about Omarion and Mario? You hear about that Versus? No. Okay, great. I haven't seen it. But have you heard about it? No. Nope. Okay, so long story short, Omarion and Mario have a Versus. Omarion eats watermelon during the segment, and, like humps the ground. His sing is not the best. Ray J gets up there. He sings with a baby. Uh, his son, and then he doesn't sing his song well, and then I heard about this. Okay, great. See, from, I think from you. All right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> long story short, long, and then they start harmonizing his song better, and then he gets upset. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they were singing "One Wish" or something like yes, that. Yes, very hilarious. The reason why I bring this up is this built up hype for Mario. Like Mario's about to drop, and. Um, a new album and everything else in between, right? Um, are you familiar with Mario? Nigga. Hey, yes. hey. Oh, this nigga. Yes, that was my my dude growing up. Now Kevin's making sure. I had sure. like three of his albums. I, <laughs> like that of Mario. Not yes. woohoo. Yes. Okay. He don't he don't got a brother. I know. Okay. Anywho. He, yes, he wore the Baltimore Ravens jersey because he's from DC. Yes, I know. Okay. Anywho. Mm. Anywho, so a song about getting his hair braided. Okay. <laughs> so there's this thing that came up that I kind of wanted to bring here because you brought up perspective <laughs> taking last week, which was, I thought was pretty dope in the Play-Doh games. And I kind of want to make it more of a segment. Now, we, it's so weird. And like our Play-Doh game segment today, we were kind of talking about Tory Lane's Meg Thee Stallion. We've talked about it before. Yeah. Um, everyone however you feel about it. We've talked about it. We're not going to go too far into it, but so Mario released that he's going to be making a song, uh-uh. right? With Tory Lanez. So like he, the last two weeks, people were pumping up Mario. His streams were up everything. Right. Wow. And then he released, he said he was going to release a single this week with Tory Lanez. And then what the part that I thought was very interesting is he got a lot of backlash from men not women about him making a song. And I want to ask for you and not ask of you, but just ask of this, this part why I bring it up is like, when is knowing when to like read the room versus I don't care when nobody says I'm standing and I'm dying on this hill because my, Mm. my thing is like Mario, I'm not counting his pockets or anything like that. He's a made man. But, like, in the music industry, sports, it's what have you been doing for me lately. Absolutely. So, my thing is, once again, Mario, I respect him as a musical GOAT, but, like, he's not on the top 100 chart as often. So, Mm -hmm. him having the spike is big. And it's just, I find it interesting. And, and here's the thing. He had a tweet talking about how we need to protect black women and all this other stuff when it came out. And it was, like, a middle ground type of a, like, tweet but it was like black men need to protect black women blah 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 blah, blah. and now he's making a song with Tory Lanez who's allegedly you know didn't protect a black woman so with you hearing all of this and knowing all this why do you think Mario made that decision bro um I think we just live in a world of cloud chasing ooh like like truthfully like I think I've said this before is like people want to be where 
they can be popular. And like you were saying, Mario hasn't came out with nothing in a long time. And so I think this is Mario's opportunity to put his name back out there, put an album back out there Mm -hmm. to kind of like put his face back out there and, you know, put a little extra change in his pocket. But in the same extent, it's like, what are you entitling? What is this all about? Right? Like, we live in a society now where it's like, it's all about trending. Trending is going to get you promotions. Trending is going to get you marketing. Trending is going to get you everything that you might need. And how can I be trending? I get on this show. Since I've done this show, I already had this music waiting. Get on the show. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Get on the show. Do the thing. Oh, it happens to blow up in my per- in a positive way for me. But I think either way, after the show, he would have dropped music anyway. Mm. Either way. I feel like, and then next is going to be somebody else who's on the show. Next is going to be somebody else who's on the show. Uh, quick sidebar. I found a way for us to work. So, Uno. Oh, it was already moving. Yeah. So you push it. It was moving by itself. What do you mean? That's why I set it down. It was moving by itself. It was changing. Like it was changing by itself. Oh. Um, all right. Uh so, um oh, because I put on find your face. And I gotta figure out how to unlock that. I guess for me why um the struggle is like I I definitely get that. Mm -hmm. But it's almost kind of like when is like too much, you know? True. True. Very much so. It's very true. And I guess I just look at it as like there's just like one uh, Mario song that I, I didn't watch the verses, but I know he probably didn't play it. It's with like him and Rick Ross is called Forever. It's like a really good song that gets no play. So that was when um, Omario signed with Maybach Music. So Marion is signed with Maybach Music for a while. Oh, maybe that's why he couldn't play it. And so he left Maybach Music. <gasps> oh, that's it's a Mar that Mario Rick Ross song so hard to me. And I guess for me, it's kind of like when I look at my principles, there's certain things like it's almost kind of like I wouldn't do business with a divorce attorney. Like mm. I wouldn't like have a retainer being like, all right. You know, I'm going to help try to save your marriage, things like that. But also, like, if it doesn't work, go to a divorce attorney. Because I feel like I'm lying in bed with, or I, like, I'm being, like, I'm inviting something. Or, like, I'm saying that this is a possibility, right? Mm -hmm. I'm putting myself in a situation where it, it doesn't align with my practices. Absolutely. And not to saying that I'm against divorce. Because sometimes you do need to get a divorce, right? Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like, why would Rob's <laughs> my my dream of ha- having like a full community center have the fourth level be divorced? Like now I'm trying to keep people together. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, that's that's an interesting perspective here. Definitely. Like it. it <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. It's basically what you're saying to me is like. If I'm going to go speak to a divorce lawyer, I've already called it quits on a relationship. Just the, eh, just, eh, nah. I would say eight times out of 10, yeah. And, and instead of trying to figure out if it is a possibility of working or just going to see like someone who deals with marriage counseling instead of a divorce lawyer yeah. or, you know, and I, and I, I understand what you're saying though. Like that's putting yourself in the, Putting yourself in that situation um, is going to be the outcome that you didn't want. Yeah. So, yeah. I respect it. I hear you. I agree. You got nothing else on the clip? Nothing else on the clip? Oh. About this? No, nah, not really. All I right. think I think for me, I think Mario is just, chow- he's just clout chasing. He's just trying to put himself back out there. And this is his way of doing it. Am I going to enjoy the music if it's good? Hell yeah. If it's not, no. And I think at the end of the day, I think we have to get away from... We, I think, as society, I think we have to understand, like, trending and not trending. Right? Like, 
get away from that. I posted something today of like, stop being a follower. Like, everybody wants to do what the other person is doing because it's trending. I want to, like this whole lip sync thing with the phones on TikTok. <laughs> uh-huh. Right? Like, everybody started doing this and everyone is doing these things because they want to get famous, become a famous TikToker, right? Like, so I got this question right now. Doja Cat being like, hey, let's do a lip sync song. You doing the lip no. sync song? No. Really? Wow. I don't like Doja Cat. If Doja Cat was like, I want to be on your podcast, you know what I would say? Hell yeah. Come yeah. To- <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, All right. if. If I'm if I'm gonna be invited to do something, to to get popular with what I'm gonna invite you to do, what I'm already doing, not change what I'm doing so I can become popular in something that I that I don't really know shit about. Well, I'm Hippocrates, so I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm about to lip sync the song with a dozen cats. Cause I'm not trying to beat the algorithm. <laughs> I, I'm gonna be like, look. You can come do the lip sync song on my podcast. Come sit down, have a conversation, and then, then do your lip sync. All right. Now, would you touch your booty with consent? That's here and we're there. Ah, yeah, yeah. I, I played the fifth. All <laughs> right, all right. My man's died. On, I was really trying to see. He's like, oh, is he really not going to do it? But no, I actually do respect that um, because there are definitely things you like. What do you? What can I say? There's definitely there's definitely things you have to like stand your ground on. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, once again, um, I even look at the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing, where it's kind of like, um, because I definitely want to say this. I know, I know Johnny Depp is not an angel of a dude, right? No, no man is real an angel. No woman is an angel. But we all know Amber Heard was was, was shitting on beds and shit. She was violent. <laughs> and my thing is like, just looking how, looking how like that whole one thing messed up his entire career, his bag, you know. And I guess my over, overarching point is, you know, just being mindful of like who you who you associate with, mm-hmm. and guilty by association, man. Yeah, so it's almost kind of like, I don't think Mario was trying to, like, I think, I actually probably think they're probably friends, and, mm-hmm. like, it's like reading the room, where, like, you look at you look at it like this, um, I feel like Drake and Kendrick and all these mate, like, top-tier people, and LeBron, like, all these, like, they get it, they're like, alright, holler at me, like, when you get this wrapped up, yeah, yeah, because I can only support you behind the scenes, and actually, I'll bring up this one quick thing. So I was watching this podcast, flagrant two podcasts. You guys already know, love them. And they had Logan Paul on there. Right. Mm, yeah. And Logan Paul was talking about how, when he was blowing up on Vine and shit, his hero, the rock reached out to him. And then I don't know if you remember Logan Paul went to Japan and like film people in the suicide garden. No. Or like, that's like an area there. I may have to blur that part out, but I don't know. But long story short, he, everyone was like, why would you film? Like, that's context too. Like you're it's like, stop that. And like the rock, the rock, one of the rocks represent representatives reached out to, um, Logan Paul and was like, yeah, um, take down all the pictures of me and you just, just do that. And he, he was talking about how that hurt him, but it's almost kind of like, I get where the rock is coming from. You see what I'm saying? Where it's kind of like, we're not taking back the Drake and Kendrick. I'm pretty sure they support a lot of these people that we're like condemning, like on the back end. They're like, let's just back away. Look at Drake and, um, and uh, Young Thug. I'm not going to say shit about this, but then when he dropped his new song, he throws up the you know, slime life forever. He, he's, he's appeasing all of the things he needs to appease. Yeah. I think, I think, Oh man, celebrity status, man! Oh my god! It's not, I mean, so there's there's politicians who do this. I think our but closest I, example are celebrities because we can't see some of this back in room uh, handshaking. But I think that is something we create in society 
that like at any moment you could be the bad guy. And so how do you mm. jump out the way of being the bad guy? You disassociate with people that are doing bad things and or slip mm. up. You know, Chris Rock situation, the Will Smith situation, right? Like uh, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence posted they're still going to do Bad Boys 4, even though what happened with the Oscars. That's still going through, re- recognizing, like... Even with that post alone, recognizing, right? Like, even with his Oscar situation, we're still going to do Bad Boys 4. Which is meaning what? He might not get at all the accolades he could really acquire with that because of this situation. Mm-hmm. So now it's like, who wants to be associated with that? Granted, he, he is who he is, is Will Smith. So, like, but he's not getting a lot of stuff anymore. He's not getting a lot of hosting and stuff and you've seen well everywhere which is vile right so th- think about those things right one one incident caused you to lose your life basically and your livelihood so i think that is also why a lot of those upscale F, up top one percent stay back and put their hands up and say i'm not a part of none of this and I, you know good or bad or negative like I think that's just kind of where they are. And I think it's it's always good to be mindful of who you're around and who you put yourself in a situation with because you never know how that person can affect you positively or negatively. Well, let's we'll just say this. Maybe uh, 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 Martin Lawrence is uh, Will Smith's uh, Dior because Dior stayed with uh, uh, Johnny Depp the entire time. And, and it paid out. But I, and I, but I also think... I also think relationships right like martin lawrence and will smith's relationship is deeper than the slap or deeper Mm -hmm. than the situation it's deeper than that and i think i praise martin lawrence and i praise everyone who who still fucks with will like i i still fuck with will i do too regardless of like whatever the situation may be because that just that one incident doesn't make the man and you you know that's one of like my greatest fears that I, I like, I think that's something you have to fight every day because there's a lot of things that we do. And we're like, what if a person takes this out of context on the podcast or mm-hmm. what if they think I'm this and I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I've learned a lot from watching like little Duvall, <laughs> like leaning in to like, he always says, what y'all fake caring about today where it's kind of like, I feel like a lot of people like virtue signal and do all different things. So they don't want to, you know, be got the boogeyman's going to get you where it's kind of like the one thing I have a problem is you have a cancel culture is there's no reform. The reason why our prison systems don't work is there's no proper reform. Mm. I feel like there's certain people who are just going to be in prison, free prison, but like there's no, why did this happen in prison? Not trying to say they didn't get four star treatment, but like what, like what, like how can this happen? So you're not in here again. I tell mm-hmm. all my clients, I want to be a memory for you. Like I want for you, That's, I want you to come back. See, and I, I said the same thing when it came to doing like fitness stuff, right? Like if I'm a trainer and you have to come back to me every year for five years straight, I'm not doing my job. I'm not doing my job. I want to get you right so you can leave me after a year, two years. Mm -hmm. And now I've given you the tools so that you can be successful on your own. And I think that is, I think, a piece in society that we don't, we don't do. Like, we don't give people the keys to allow people to be successful on their own. Like, we don't. And like you're saying, like, when it comes to therapy, like, if you're coming to me every year or every month, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Mm. I'm supposed to be able to help you get through your process so that you can do these things on your own. Exactly. Like things are like seasons, right? Mm -hmm. Like there are some people who are going to be in therapy for life and maybe I'm their person for life. And my goal, which say my goal is to get you to see you maybe like every three months. 
Like I have some clients like that. We're like, we're going to follow you to the, until you retire type of things. And it's just like getting a point, getting a person to a point of stability in their life where, yeah. where I always, t- I always say evolution is the precedent uh, of a life because mm. Love always evolves. True. If you are loving someone you did in year one and year five, you're going to be bored. You're going to be like, this relationship isn't effective. Like, there's no spark. Mm. It's because you're not evolving your love. Love is like a fire. You have to keep putting logs on that shit. Like, it'll be there, but you got to do that shit. It also comes to fitness, too. I literally just switched up my entire work routine, and, like, I feel it. And like I've been doing the same workout routine for me like three, four years. And this uh, the guy I always see at the gym, we have the same body type built. I always talk to him, hella cool. He's like, do this. And he's like, this is all for free. Then we'll talk about meal plans. I'm trying to have him on the podcast. Like he's like staunchly like uh, I don't think he'll mind saying this. he's like staunchly like Republican. Mm. And like I love his mindset because me and him have dope conversations. Like he knows where I stand with a lot of different stuff, but like just being able to have a conversation and sit with this person. Yeah. But anyway, long story short, I've been doing this new workout plan for the last month because I'm just trying to have like more strength, like my whole body and everything. And this is like without like him like doing like the meal shit with me. I'm like, God damn, he know the fuck he talking about. Yeah. And like I'm peaking and plateauing at really good spots and places because I evolved my workout. Yeah. And just like, you know, you know more about the body than, than I do. Our body's going to get used to our workouts. So maybe they're coming to you for something new in the relationship. So, like, that's, I think that's like the thing that evolution, you know? Yeah, man. Evolution. So, people, when people hear the word evolution, you only think of animals and right? Pokemon. Right? Like, right? Mm-hmm. And, but you have to realize, like, we're an animal too. Like, we're part of that society. So, when it talks about evolution, we have to adapt and change. We adapt and change every day anyway. As you get older, you learn something new. Hopefully, that learning process is an evolution process. It's change. Change is coming to you. That means you've evolved. And I think we have to, like you're saying, like, love is ever evolving. Like, you never know, even if it's love within yourself, if it's love within a person, mm-hmm. love within a relative, love within a friend. Like that love is ever evolving and it's going to change and adapt and grow and it should grow. Yeah. Like, and I think that's the most important piece that I think we escape from is like thinking that it shouldn't change. Like th- we should have the same relationship from the jump forever. No, because then y'all didn't grow. Y'all didn't get nowhere. Y'all didn't move nothing. Y'all didn't move no mountains. Like, and I, and you have to get out of that mindset, like get out of that mindset expects this person to be different in 10 years Mm -hmm. but what you have to learn is how do we communicate this love process so that in 10 years i'm gonna love you just as if i loved you in year one Mm -hmm. even with the change and that and that everyone could literally be applied to almost anything that you do absolutely it truly is where it comes to you know how you deal with your kids how you deal with your family like and I'll even I'll even kick it to family type or, or actually I'll even kick it kick into career for people, right? This is applicable on all, all careers. Your career is changing. ESPN right now is numbers are falling. How do I know this? They just literally had and reported that John Morant said something on this like podcast that he's better than Jordan, and then they were like, that didn't happen. And these ESPN writers, the Kendrick Perkins, all these people, you know, things like that, they don't know, they're not changing and adapting to the times. And I say this is because journal journalism is evolving. You have yeah. YouTubers that people go to to get their sports knowledge now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and podcasters. And podcasters, where it's kind of like, all right, ESPN, I think it's time for you to pick some of these YouTube niggas up and be like, all right. You may not be on 24 hour news cycle, but like, all right, jam out, do what y'all do. Where it's kind of like, it's ever evolving. If you even want to be motherfucking a janitor, there's evolution to that. Like, there's going to be a new way to clean. It's just like evolution looking to 
as passion. Like, oh, go ahead. So going to that point, right? What happened when COVID happened? COVID struck arenas and stuff like that. They came out with these machines that literally spray <laughs> and sanitize. That's the evolution. That's a change. Something mm-hmm. happened quickly to now that we can walk through this whole arena in ten seconds and clean this whole motherfucker mm-hmm. with with the sanitizing spray. And it's like little things like that, like you're saying, like this whole aspect of evolution is just it's you have to be fluid, you have to be willing to change, and you have to be open about the change that's gonna happen. Yeah. <clears throat> and um I guess I kinda would also you know also that makes me think about too is like even when you like evolve and change and things like that, it's also uh, a big piece of like Oh, what can I say? I feel like people wear their guilt and grief like a coat. Like it's something they put on before they go to work or before they do certain things. And um, I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. And I guess I kind of want to mix into this too as well. I'm just curious. um, Because once again, I, I feel like not enough people just openly talk about this. And I'm just curious when it comes to like dealing with. Because we all have that small voice, that small voice that says we're not doing enough. And we all have it. And sometimes the volume is up high. And I want to know. And maybe I'll start off is like, how do you turn that volume down? Because mm. life is perspective. Like, I'm not always going to be happy. I'm trying to be happy all the time. But, um, but also, failure and guilt and grief is a part of the game. But it's not supposed to stranglehold you. That's the difference. Because then you're starting to make life's decisions from fear. So, I think I kind of wanted to bring this up. And feel free and open to it, but I'm not going to lie, y'all. I'm not going to lie, y'all. I'm going to say this on the cast. Cue that P. Diddy. Cue that Mace. Uh, 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 <laughs> the, sh- the sun, how do you say it? As long as you hear, the sun's going to shine together. Never mind the weather. Business before pleasure. P. Diddy in the building. No one can do it better. But anyway, I'm not going to lie. Fighting. <laughs> No, no, fighting the voice mm. because the voice of because I'm around like yeah, I'm around thirty now, and I feel like when a lot of people get thirty, they like where my boo at? No, nah, absolutely. They at where my where my pink range? That's funny. And the reason why I say that is I feel like having a conversation of like man having a girl. Having a chica will be kind of nice right now. And sometimes I'll say this, the voice of it will never happen is so loud in my head. It's crazy. And there are times where I guess I'll bring this up here. The reason why I want to bring this up is I was having an interesting group chat conversation with a person. And I told them I'm in so much pain. And they're like, that's not okay for you to be in pain. Mm. And the reason why I told them that it's okay is like, that's a part of the process. Absolutely. Because like, my thing is when you don't admit that you want something or you are, because I know it's like not to have, but you that's also, when pain controls your life, bro. But you also know what it's like that you did have and what you, you don't have anymore. Right. So huh. it, it it goes in it goes it really goes in both directions, right? Like when you have something, and you enjoyed what you had, then you don't have that anymore. And you recognize, like, yes, it was not what I wanted. Yes, it, there's aspects of what you had that you miss, and that's where the pain comes from. And and I feel like in those in those deep sets of emotion, it's like recognizing the beauty of. Having somebody, right? Like those yeah. moments of like, 
man, fuck it. It's 98 degrees. Let's go to the beach. And you're, you're like, fuck, I ain't even got nobody to rock with to the beach. Like, where my chick at? You know what I'm saying? Or where my... Doing stuff on your own is fun. Doing what just do it. Uh, well, hey, I'm, hey, not, hey. I, I'm not saying doing it on doing it on your own is definitely fun, but like that extra oomph to the situations, right? Thousand. Like even if it's like a person you just chatting it with, whatever the case may be. But like those moments become like memorable. Like fuck yeah, I remember this dude. Oh fuck. So it's like you you kind of like you miss aspects of what you had, but going forward, it's like recognizing like. That's you have to break that aspect of like who you are up and take it in. Mm-hmm. So I felt like I was I was dealing in that same situation for a minute of like missing out on things because of missing old opportunities, right? Mm-hmm. And um, not nah, like it's it's dope what you're saying because I I have to agree. Like I I I, I truly agree. Because you got to look at it like this, and you know how I love my fucking superheroes and shit. You know who the Hulk is? Yeah. Okay, I about to say. So, if you look at the creator, the guy who, because you got to look past, like, superpowers and things like that. Like, Superman, Captain America, all these people, they embody something that we want in, like, human society. Like, why people love Superman? Because he's the best of one of the greatest human qualities. Mm-hmm. Selflessness. Courage. Yeah. And we look at the Hulk. He's angry. Anger is quote unquote bad. That is so mainstream in our uh, society. But also, and where do we send people? Anger management, because you can't control. So, I have a comment once you get done. Go ahead. All right. So, anger is a secondary emotion. Yep. There's something under that anger. And the reason why I bring up Bruce Banner and the Hulk, because Bruce Banner is calm all together, but like he's a pushover. But the Hulk. He's destroying worlds. <laughs> like that's to the extreme. Yeah. But if you if you're all Marvel buffs and things like that, or you read the uh Marvel comics, the Hulk and Bruce Banner eventually come together. And when you look at anger management, right? Anger management is about you having control over your anger, right? Absolutely. And Bruce Banner was able to control his anger, but for him to really maximize who he was, he had to let his anger and him come together. And that's the free flowing of why I want to bring up pain, right? When you make decisions and choices strictly from anger, right? You're getting one spectrum of it. Yeah. And I'll bring it back to me. When you make decisions and choices from pain, I'm going on random dates I need to be going on. I'm wasting somebody's time, things like that. It's like I was telling this person, it's okay for me to be in pain, mm-hmm. but it's not okay for me to make choices from pain. Yeah. that's I can have me and my pain be, be together. And that's what I kind of wanted to share because I feel like a lot of people go through that. It's the same thing with anxiety, same thing with depression. Yeah. You can have these things, but they can't dominate all your choices. And I, and, and my comment is like, people don't have to, people don't recognize the underlying emotion to all emotions. And I think the biggest the biggest underlying emotion is love. And people don't understand that. You're in pain because you love. You're angry because you loved. Mm. Because if you didn't love, you wouldn't be angry. Mm. If it didn't hurt, you didn't love. Ah. All these, all happiness, joy, right? Because you enjoy it. You love this. Mm-hmm. All these stem from this one true emotion, which is love. And people don't see that or recognize that there's a stemming piece. Like, if you're willing to go out of your way and, and terrorize somebody, there is a sense of passion or care or love to somebody. Oh, you're going, you going dark. You're going real dark hole. So, like, and and you, you have to, like, when when you can understand that, I think you begin to appreciate the emotions that come through with everything. Because then you have to take a step back and look at yourself and yeah. say, "What do I love? Who do I love?" And if you love yourself, all these other emotions don't really play into it. But when you love dearly, you have to recognize that those emotions will come out in different ways and be expressed in different ways. Mm. And I and I think like. And I learned this from from an, actually a psychology class uh, talking about emotions in college, and um, and so like we forget like 
we forget we don't understand our true emotions. Hmm. But understanding our true emotions is understanding our true self. And, and when you take a step and you look at yourself in the mirror and say, do you love you? And if you can't say I love you to yourself in the mirror, how can you love anybody else around you? Hey, my, one of my favorite quotes um, from my mentor uh, is uh, you can't outsource internal issues onto external Absolutely. Products. Absolutely. And I feel Absolutely. like that we do that a lot. And I let's we'll just say, man, you said it beautifully. Um and that just hits home for me. And the reason why they hit home homes for me is because I always feel like abnormally weird as a like a guy at times, being like, Man, I have a lot of love, even though I don't present it and show it all the way because the world told me that if I go like that, it's going to be taken the wrong way. Yeah. Um, and why I mean taken in the wrong way is like, um, even just using your equation, let's just say someone who stalks someone. If like, if we are breaking it down to like the rudimentary, like if we're breaking down the psychology, just bringing in, like you're saying, that person has, an obsessive amount of love for this person to go out of the way to do that. And not saying that it's right, but that's what happens when you don't have control over your superpower. Mm -hmm. You do stuff like that. Because if we look at um, Freud, it ha we have the superego, we have the id, and we have the ego. Superego, I think mm -hmm. uh, the id is just our pleasure, right? Yeah. If we just use stalking, not, and not going anything, anywhere further... That is an animalistic thing. I can't want, and I'm not, I'm not going to listen to any reason or logic, so I'm pretty sure, just like in Get Out, homeboy was like, I don't think you should be going there. <laughs> but you know, my homeboy Dick was talking. He's like, I got to go see these white people. That's fine. Um, but <laughs> I got to see these white people. But, um, That's funny. Um, but I think, it's, I, think it, I think it's that, man. It's just like yeah. being able to, yes, Control your anger, but have manageability around the things. Like, mm -hmm. you can be in pain, but not all the time. You can't let pain dominate. Like, it has to be something stronger. And that stronger piece, like you said, is love. But And you also have to recognize, like, where that pain is coming from, right? Like, I stub my toe. I know where that pain is coming from, mm -hmm. right? If someone breaks my heart, why... Why does it hurt? Right? Why why is there pain there? Oh, right? you want me like, to, for me? No, I'm just saying in general. Like you can answer that question, but like why is there pain there, right? If someone if it's the same pain that you get when you stub your toe, when someone breaks your heart. Now, heart heartache, bro, you be like, "Oh, there's this like video. Oh, I think I'm going to show it. I'm, I got to I got I got to Oh, I sent it to you. Yeah, sir. I sent it to you. I sent it to you. I sent it to you. I was playing on the pot. Where you at? It says when you get back together after a breakup. I'm gonna play the audio for y'all. Oh, you gotta see it. Never mind. Wait, let me. Oh yeah. I fuck seven bitches. Oh yeah. We can't do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we'll get copyright strike. I don't know. Ah fuck. Hopefully not. Um, but. But even in that, even in that video, right? Like, it hurts. I feel like men sometimes hurt worse than women do, and 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 I, and I don't, I don't know if I should have this conversation without a woman here in perspective here. Do it, do it. But do I like, it. I truly feel like men, because men love differently than women do, and our way of expressing our love might be outlandishly weird, but. <laughs> But I think we love harder than women do. Well, you, well, you bring your girl dead bird and put it on her doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you doing? <laughs> that's actually that's actually some, that's actually that's probably that's that's some psychopaths have done that. <laughs> I'm actually not gonna lie, they've probably done that. But my thing is like, and I think that's why sometimes like we don't recognize the pain, like we don't recognize like that pain, that true pain, and that feeling, so that. When that uh, that breakup happens or that that aspect of something happens, 
we don't know where it comes from. Women have have so so called so to speak have more intention with their emo- or understanding of their emotions, so they know why they know and have that understanding. Men don't, and I feel like our first thing for a breakup is revenge, which is anger. Mm. And that I feel like that's how men are. Like, I've never done that in my life. You do you do stuff after a breakup that you normally wouldn't do. You go out and you get back in in some type of way by doing something that doesn't fit to your personality. I've most I've most never men, I've never most done men that. do that. Yeah, most men do that. I was at home, excessively drinking. Oh, nah. Mm-hmm. You, I've only that, been drunk like three times in my life. Do you have? Yeah, do you always obsessively drink, Robert? No, actually, actually, I I'm just not a drinker. I'm not. Bruh. No, I'm not. Oh, you can you can ask Josh and Jordan right now. Jordan can out drink me. Jordan's the drinker. Yeah, Jordan's a drinker. But sorry, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, but excessively drinking. That's one that, that's that's an average dude thing. But you know what I'm saying? That is that is something that happens. I did it, and you know me. I don't really drink. Hey, I hey, man. I, I'm a, all I'm gonna say is I jumped in the rabbit hole for a day. Hey, man. You know. I always tell my friends, when I told you it's a better way. It's a better way. And look at you. Um, yeah, man. I think I think just people have to radically accept themselves, know that they're not always going to be viewed in a way. Uh, and that's why I know we fucking rabbit hole. But ultimately, I know there's going to be one day and I'm gonna wake up on social media, and all the praise and clout that I have built up is going to work against me. I'm gonna get Will but, Smith, but I think the reason why I say this is to say that you gotta die on some hill. You're not going to be uh, picture perfect for everything. And I think the thing that I want to champion and champion is people. Knowing the true purpose of what love is. My 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 biggest question to you, my or a comment to you is is why care? Right? Like into the sense of like waking up on social media and you're getting blasted. Why care? Like like I understand so like I understand aspects of it, right? Like you think Will Smith cares? Yeah, nigga. Bro. So that's a so I it my the situation for me, the, not to go back into Will Smith's situation, but for me, if my wife defends me in that process of what happened, I wouldn't have cared. I wouldn't have cared about the repercussions. I wouldn't have cared about anything else. But the fact that it there's it, a level of care still in there. No, because I'm I'm defend I'm for me I'm about. For me, I think personally, like I, I say what I mean and I do what I say. I, and so like you can't go back. Once I've done it, I've done it. Whatever, I'm owning up to it. Fuck it, like I've done it. I think that is something that you just have to realize and recognize. Like, who cares what people think? Who cares? Like at the end of the day, I don't care. Hey, you know, you make it on me, but I feel like that's a stereotypical guy trope of like, I don't care. Nigga, you care. Bro, if you went on a break, yeah, and I'm bring up the I'm bring up the clip. I'm bring up the clip. I said this to all my homies, and you on a break, and y'all can do whatever y'all want. And you were like, I had sex with 10 girls. And she was like, I wanted a date with Tyrone. You be you gonna be like this. I wouldn't, so like, so, I wouldn't like, in a sense, it, it's not in a sense of being like, yeah, fuck that, I don't care. No, it's it's more of like, damn, okay, that hurts, but I can't control that because I did my thing on the other end, right? So it's okay. like, there's only so much in that situation you can really control, like, because she's going to look at me the same way, well, nigga, you out here fucking seven bitches. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to use guy math and say that that 
doesn't compute, and I'm gonna carry the guy and carry the X chromosome. But, <laughs> but at the end of the day, like, I, like I was watching, I was watching a YouTube video on Cruise Season. Shout out Cruise Season on YouTube. Um, you send me a lot of the video. Yeah, I do. Um, and one We're of the good. women was like, you know, women have options too. And I, you had to, you had to put that in perspective, and I think women have more options than men do. Yeah, a right? thousand and a, a thousand percent. So, like being understanding, not even reflecting on the number. Even if I, I only fuck one, and I'm like, yeah, I fuck fifteen. Damn, I was gonna make this a clip, but <laughs> <laughs> this is very cliffable. I want you to know. <laughs> Damn, women got options. I've been fucking these women. Wow, misogynistic. <laughs> But you don't care, right? <laughs> but you don't care. Oh, man. And my thing is not knocking that whatsoever. I think we're going to the same place. But I'm not to trying to say what I'm saying is, is right. Because if that completes yourself, then that completes yourself. I think radical acceptance of, let's just say, I wake up in the morning for me tomorrow. And people are blasting me or say I did something or things like that. As humans, we want to be accepted by our peers. And my thing Pack is... Pack mentality. My thing is, as someone who didn't doesn't have a problem being an outsider, it still hurts to be an outsider. And my thing is, because my goal and what I'm going for is something that I self-set, that can also exist at the same time as me. Like, damn, I really wish these people understood. Or, I damn, I really wish I had a pack to run with. And my thing is, for me, accepting that those those feelings and desires exist as same as much as me being like, I got to stand on this, would be a lie to the feelings. Because all of our feelings, or it's kind of like, once you work with someone on like identifying all their feelings, right? The next level of that is having them, it's almost kind of like, you've seen Inside Out, right? Good God, man. Okay. You see, it's anime. No, it's the Pixar movie Inside Out. Like they the have like balloons. A, that's up. Up. Um, inside Out. I'm trying to think. They they have like the emotions on the inside of the brain, joy, happiness. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So you see how it's about at the end of that movie, all of them are working in unison. Yeah, yeah. It's okay to be sad. It's not. Mm-hmm. Joy, take a fucking break, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> like, get that fucking, get the fuck out of here. I need to be sad. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah. all, it's all about all your emotions having a voice and a seat at the table of you. And that's why I'm like, man, when, you know, I see my boy, I see my boy, he happy. Like, man, he, he, he booed up. They doing that. And I'm like, damn, I, I really wish I had that right now. But my thing is, by me not even putting that on the stratosphere and saying that, I'm building up the darker side of being envious and jealous. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be jealous, but it's about, oh man, I really want, because my barber put that in perspective. It's toxic jealousy turns into something that is like problematic, but like switching, like, man, I'm happy for my boy switching to like, man, I can't wait for it to be my turn. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I mean by everything inside of me. And it's not perfect. I'm not trying to be perfect. It's a growth. It's growth being like, yeah. damn, I really wish. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely. And I, that's just, it's, it's a, it's a positive mindset just to have in general, right? Like you're saying, like envious, envious and jealousy is, is not inherently bad. You no. Know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, I think it's, it's not, I wouldn't even call it jealousy. It's like positive. It's like, um, what is that word? Fucking name. I can't think of the word right now. Oh my god, it's stuck in my head. Uh, but there's a word for it. Um, it's almost like affirmations, right? Like seeing positive things and wanting positive things, like and being able to be affirmed that what you want, you see, right? It's almost like an affirmation, like your homeboy. Yeah, I can do that too. It's it's affirming your belief in what you can do and what you can be. Um. Yeah. So no, I respect that though, because I, I I think I, like, I'm I'm always that type of to be like, you need help, shit. I help you, whatever. Yeah. Like, or, you know, like, 
I want to see my friends be successful. I want to see my friends in a, in a positive relationship. I want to see everybody doing what they want to do, regardless of what it is. And and try not to cast judgment. You know, there's aspects of it that you like. I feel like there's some there's. I'm not going to cast judgment on somebody, but if there's something that I don't agree with, I'm gonna step away from. And and I think that that's just me, my personality. Every heterosexual cis gendered man wants to after a long day come home and come literally home. see their beautiful wife girlfriend and when she says she has a headache instead of giving her ibuprofen you just rub her cheeks they all want that <laughs> and be like this will help your brain waves by me rubbing your butt <laughs> 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 oh my god for how you said it i knew exactly what you was talking about i knew exactly what you they'll be like about. oh my gosh my leg let me just i'll rub your butt like it'll make it better <laughs> no it won't we're just being dicks <laughs> oh my god you got a headache let me rub your cheeks <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's hell um i had a question but i'm not gonna ask it it's kind of like off topic uh, we'll we'll yeah. save it, my man. Nah, uh, and just one for me. I think to the people, like my biggest thing for everyone that listens to our podcast is like, man, find joy and happiness in you, and allow that to be the embracement of pain, sorrow, hurt, um, love, and a lot in love, in love with your whole heart, oh. like. Love with your whole heart, man. <laughs> Why is the camera off me? <laughs> this is gonna get a clip of you saying dope shit. And I'm just like, I'm just getting this callous. That's that my. Um, I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> If I never looked, I, I was like, why is it, why is a close up? I'm just like, damn. They be like, people watching, like, what the fuck is he doing, bro? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. But love, I mean, love wholeheartedly, man. Like, I think we live in a society where we don't love completely. And I think we need to work on just loving everyone, loving the ones around us. Because if we don't experience that, you don't learn from that, um, the other stuff becomes hard. Spoken like a true champ, and you guys, this is going to be our shorter, uh, supposed to be a shorter episode, but turned, eh, I, we got five minutes, we got five minutes, oh, well, there's five minutes, I'll knock off off here, probably longer and now. then I'm probably going to take off that Chris Brown thing, because I'm pretty sure they'll copyright strike me just for this background sound, so, anywho, um, if you like what we're doing, we're trying to build a motherfucking studio, man, help us out. Mm. I've been sitting in the studio. I'm trying to get to you, baby. Y'all know we the dopest podcast. We we like we so fucking dope, girl. It's hard enough for me to. Oh my bad. No, I'm just like yo. We're really Voltron now. We got a leg, an arm, a head. I'm just saying we Voltron in this bit, and we just need y'all because we trying to save y'all. We trying to make this Earth um a place where the aliens want to visit, man. Uh. Absolutely. And that's... I got alien love. friends, fam. Exactly. Exactly. So if you like what we're doing, please follow us on our page on YouTube, Play No Games. Um, just type it in. Type in podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and Anchor. <laughs> and if you want some dope clips and some... Actually, some pretty cool dope stuff... Uh, Follow the Instagram page, lookhere.fri. And then also our TikTok page probably will be up sooner. I'm sorry, y'all. I've been dragging my feet on the TikTok page. Or more raunchier clips will be on TikTok until they're taken down. Um, oh, shit's not ye. Um, Again, like. Please comment so you can uh, be a part of our our questions session um, on our show. Comment. If you got positive comments, preferably, but we'll accept We'll take comments. the negatives. We'll take all comments, um, concerns, and opinions. Um, 
reach us. Talk to us. We're here. We listen. Um, some of our episodes have been from people's comments and questions. So literally, uh, if you want to be talked about, we might even uh, tag you. So we might even. I'm, hey, you. you know, I'm gonna talk might to. Even, we might even tag you in talk, it. So I'm talk to Andrew the Wizard. So uh, follow us. Follow us on the IG. Follow us on the on everything. Um, again, this is play no games. We trying to take you to a higher vibration. Oh, uh, yeah, this is Rob. <laughs> and I'm Arthur. <laughs> How we done? I'm so sorry. You probably wonder if I think of you. Sorry, I'm for the bag right now. Yeah, I'm for the bag right now. Yeah, for the bag that I never had. Yeah, you probably mad right now. Yeah, I got a two piece now. Shit, I think they call them groupies now.